for the next paper, WhiteNet++ is trying to address that problem to include some local features. And then because you want to include more local features, things are going to get more complicated in terms of the method. Okay, let's go over that. So you can get your data from structure sensors as well. Just Google this and then you're going to see some cool technology behind it. But for us, it's just a point cloud. Uh, this is the 2D image of the 3D point cloud. It's the same view, but then from two different types of sensor. One is a camera, one is a structure sensor. And immediately you're going to see some problems. One is that locally, sometimes some points are absent. The resolution at some areas are really high, but in some other areas it's very low or it's actually absent, like here. So the method that you're going to devise should try to take those details into account. So I'm going to have this picture around. We're going to refer to this a couple of times. So let's go through the math. And let's start with the previous paper, PointNet. For PointNet, you had a bunch of points. For instance, these are the points in your mug, and these are unordered. It's just a set. It's just a set of points. And what PointNet was doing was taking each one of these points, pushing them through the same function, which was MLP, multiple layers of that. And then in the end, you had a maximum over your points. And then you took that max and you pushed it through another function, another MLP, and that gave you your features. So what are we going to do with the hierarchical point set feature learning? We need to take into account the local context. That's the whole idea of point net plus plus. There is gonna be a set abstraction level. The set abstraction level is gonna have a sampling step, which is about finding the centroids of your local regions. It's about finding these small dots. You're gonna have a grouping layer, which is gonna find the neighboring points around your centroids. So it's gonna give you these neighboring points. And then the next idea is that you take your point net from the previous paper, and then you apply that locally to get your features. N is the number of points in your point cloud. D is three, if you have a three dimensional point or set of points, and then C could be any other features that you have. That's why you have B plus C. So let's take a look at the sampling layer. First, you need to find the centroids of your local regions. To find the centroids, you're gonna use farthest point sampling. What is that? In the end, you want to end up with a subset of your point cloud. You want to end up with a subset. So how does farthest point sampling work? Let's say you collected, you found your subset and you found J minus one of them. So now the size of your subset is J minus one. Now you want to add another point to this. So basically you are gonna start with one point, then you add the second point, the third point, the fourth point until you have, uh, I guess, K points. So that's gonna be the actually M points. So the size of this set is gonna be M and it's gonna be a subset of your point cloud. So you want to choose M points to be your centroids. You start with a set, now you want to add the next point. This is going to be the most distance point from your set, your current set. This is good because it's now going to span your space nicely and it's actually doing better than clustering. So that's going to give you M centroids. That's your sampling layer. For grouping layer, you need to find neighboring points around these centroids. And let's say K is the number of points in the neighborhood of your centroid. So it's going to be a the number of points around each one of these centers, but K could change from one center to the next centroid, basically from one local area to the next local area. So K is centroid dependent. K is a function of your points, your centroid. And uh, because of the structure of our data, that sometimes it is sparse, sometimes it is dense, it turns out that using bulk query is better than K nearest neighbor. Because for K nearest neighbor, you're going to fix your K. And then uh, maybe for this point, some points here are going to be included in your K nearest neighbor. And this is a totally different object compared to the floor. Okay, This is a table, that's a floor. So ball query is working. So you're just going to specify the radius around your centers. And because you have a metric space, you can measure the distance between any two points. And then you can define your radius. And that's why you're gonna have different K. So now we know what is N, we know what is D, we know what is C, we know what is K, we know what is N1. N1 is 
m here. It's the number of centroids that we came up with. Now we can apply point net. So Kevin is asking the radius seems like it would be very application sensor dependent. Uh, yes, so the problem is uh, your k is gonna be one of the hyperparameters of your model. And remember, you are always dividing your data into training, validation, and testing. These sorts of parameters, like the radius of the ball, you're gonna fine tune using your validation data. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that makes sense. And it's exactly one of those ablation studies that you're gonna do. What happens if I change K? Is the method sensitive to K? Is it not? Okay, if, are your results gonna break down because you chose your K in a smart way? Because you were looking your, at your data and then you found out that some magical K is gonna work, okay? Then around each neighborhood, you're gonna apply a mini point net. It's gonna be not the full point net from the previous paper, but it's gonna be a smaller, shallower network. But there is a catch because you are doing parameter sharing for this point net network and you want to share parameters locally, it's better to work with relative coordinates. And it's gonna be relative to, the, to your centroids. Any other point here, it's gonna be in the coordinate system defined by your centroids. How do you do that? These are your centroids. And let's say you have C of them. In this case, you have N1 of them. And uh, I know sometimes these papers are sloppy in their choice of uh, notation, but it's all right. So this is gonna be N1 of them, these are your centroids. And then because you want to write your points in this coordinate, you just subtract that. You just subtract the centroid coordinates from the coordinate of the point that you're currently considering. Now that they are in relative coordinates, these networks, these smaller networks can share parameters. The same way that convolutional neural networks are sharing parameters locally. It's the same weight and bias that you're sliding over your image, but now it's gonna be over this point cloud. And then you keep repeating that. Then you go to the next layer and then you keep repeating that step. You sample, then you group, you point net, and then you end up with some features at the end that you can either use for classification or segmentation. Classification is the easiest. Now you end up with a bunch of points. You can put everything in one bin. You apply your, your point net on top of that. You end up with a bunch of features. You push that through another fully connected. This is this gamma function, this Yes, you push it through a fully connected network and then you end up with a bunch of scores. Now, the cool thing is that your method is taking into account the local regions, but there are a bunch of problems. One is that your density of the points are non-uniform. Sometimes it's very dense, sometimes it's extremely sparse, and sometimes it is less sparse. So this is very non-uniform. It's not a uniform data set. To take care of that, you can either do multi-scale grouping. So you look at multiple scales. You do your point net plus plus in uh, multiple scales. Basically, you have multiple k's. It's going to give you a bunch of features and then you can concatenate them. The problem with this approach is that it's going to be slow because the bigger the size of your ball, the more computations you need to do. And then you can, uh, the other option is that you can have multi-resolution grouping rather than doing this per layer you can divide that into two layers. The first layer is gonna look at local neighborhoods of smaller size, smaller K or smaller radius. And then the next layer is gonna look at the entire, uh, the results of your previous layer. And that's gonna give you a multi-resolution grouping. And this one is faster compared to this one. That's one ingredient for taking care of the sampling density. Another one is a data augmentation method. What would you do to augment this data to make it less sensitive to the sampling density? You have a bunch of point clouds. First, you pick a point set, let's say the point set corresponding to a mod, and then you draw a random number, theta, from uniform distribution from zero to P. That's gonna give you a theta. This dropout is different from dropout that we are used to. That dropout was, was for dropping features. This dropout is for dropping points. Now you have a parameter theta. You can use theta to randomly drop uh, points in your point cloud with probability theta. So you're only keeping feet, a ratio of theta of your points. So you first pick a subset from your set of point clouds. Basically, you first choose a point cloud. For that, 
you pick a parameter at random, and then that theta is going to determine the dropout ratio, what ratio of these points you're going to keep. So it's a data augmentation method. And you use that for classification. You can use that for segmentation. But for segmentation, let's take a look at this. You have a bunch of points now. Now you need to go back to the original resolution in terms of the number of points. How would you go from uh, this lower resolution to this resolution? So you want to go the reverse of this route. So you want to inc increase your resolution, the number of points in your point cloud. The way that you're going to do it, you're going to need to do some sort of interpolation. There is a point here, and then you want to interpolate its value, and you can look at the neighborhood points from the previous layer. So you need to do some sort of interpolation. And at the same time, you can copy and paste. This is the unit idea. You just copy these features and then paste them here. You have C1 features here. You can just copy them here. Same thing here for the next, for the previous one. You can just copy and paste. But what is this interpolate doing? Your interpolation is just uh, inverse distance weighted interpolation. Because you have your distances. These are your distances between points. You can define WI. And uh, the rest of it is these values from the previous layer at these points are going to give you the value at the next point. So it's just an interpolation. And the cool thing is that these values are going to sum up to 1. That's WIX divided by the summation. As you add them up all together, is going to give you a value of 1. So that's your interpolation for doing the segmentation. Did I miss anything? Are there any questions? OK, perfect.